Yo, what is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back to the Fantasy Headliners. Kyle, fresh from my trip to Canton, hanging out with Jake, Dr. Ethan, Mac, Taylor, and the boys. Some of our members came out to Canton, Ohio at the Fantasy Football Expo to hang out with us. And what was really awesome was the amount of people that watch our channel and subscribe, stopping by the booth to say, Kyle, Jake, we love you guys. Thanks so much for the comment. But listen... We love you. Thank you for the support. It was incredible. Got to take pictures with some of you this weekend. Shake your hand and get to know some faces behind the comments on the video. So thanks, everybody, for showing out to the Fantasy Football Expo this weekend. It was great to hang out with you. But today's video is all about the next fantasy football stud. I've got a couple of guys here that we're going to talk about in depth. i got a couple of rookies that are quickly climbing up boards. And all four of these guys are ones that I think might be labeled fantasy football stud coming up very soon. Now, they might not be must-have right now, and maybe they won't be even be must-have coming up very soon, but one thing that is must-have is Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com. Use code word headliners at checkout. You're going to get 20% off your entire order and free shipping, so make sure that you go over there and do that to take care of yourself. Yes, summer is about done at this point, but that doesn't mean that you don't make sure that you are prepared for any type of evening out, a vacation coming up, whatever it may be. Manscaped.com is here to help you out. Now, here we go. We're going to jump into a few guys here that I'm excited for this season that I think really could end up taking a step forward and be guys that maybe at some point this year, next year, whatever it is, ones that we want to grab and add to our roster and make sure that we own them. And the first one up is going to be New England Patriots running back. No, not that one. Ramondre Stevenson. Ramondre Stevenson is a guy, if you were around the channel last year, you remember me touting this guy out of Oklahoma. I don't think he got nearly enough exposure last season for a couple of different reasons, but last year we did get an opportunity to see what he could do. In 2021, he was a running back 40, 107 fantasy points, so nothing crazy. But his ADP isn't nearly that high, even after, you know, even after a season where you looked at it and said, okay, could have been better, but we saw, we saw some glimpses. Most people out there are still looking at Damian Harris. Right now, current ADP, ADP is sitting at 95 overall as the running back 35. His stats last season, 133 attempts, 606 rushing yards on those attempts, five touchdowns, and a 4.6 yards per attempt. So not bad numbers. Not bad numbers. In fact, per if you take a look at NFL next gen stats, he had 69 rush over rush yards over expected last season and 0.53 rush yards over expected per attempt. That is when you take they take a look at the plays and they break down the plays and they say, okay, on this rush right here. He was only expected to get a certain amount of yards, but he ended up getting this many yards instead. So if you take a look at it and say, okay, based on where the playmakers were, based on where the defenders were, what the scheme was, things of that nature, maybe on this run play right here, he was only expected to get four yards, but he got eight instead. That right there would lead you to yards over expected. Well, he was 11th in total yards over expected for running backs last year, and he was ninth when you took yards over expected per attempt. So he was a guy last year that was making a lot of things happen when there wasn't a whole lot there, and that would make sense because he saw eight or more defenders in the box last season, 41.35% of the time. That was second highest in the league. It is absolutely insane to me that Ramondre Stevenson was a guy that saw that many stacked up against him last year. Now, was it because people didn't feel like they had the weapons or whatever it was? I don't know. Did they think that, hey, when Steven's on, Stevenson's on the field, we're just going to run the football? I don't know why 41.35% is what ended up coming from that. But regardless of that, he was still able to make a lot out of that when there wasn't a whole lot there. Is evidenced by his 3.26 yards per contact after attempts or yards after contact per attempt, excuse me, which was 15th among running backs. And he had 16 broken tackles last year, which was tied for 13th. So all of these things align right with each other, right? He had these yards that were above expected last season, and he was even better when it came to overexpected per attempt. 
right? And then you take a look and you say, well, that makes sense because he saw so many defenders in the box. And then you take a look at the fact that you say, okay, this is how he did it. It was because he was so hard to bring down. He was breaking tackles after people were hitting him. He was still picking up even more yards last season. And none of these numbers are super, super high, right? But there is enough here to show us that if Reminder Stevenson got more carries this year and got more attempts, he should see a better opportunity to produce. In fact, you've heard me say it several times this year that per pro football focus, his 80.9 run grade, which was 12th overall among running backs, was one of the highest grades for a rookie running back ever, ever since they've started doing these grades. Ramondre Stevenson had a truly, truly special rookie season when you take a look at efficiency, even though the volume wasn't there. And honestly, now that we know that James White is gone from the picture and Damian Harris is really kind of the only guy standing between him and a whole lot of volume, he needs to be shooting up draft boards. You have to own Ramondre Stevenson this year as a running back four, a running back five, a guy to stash on your roster, knowing that if Damian Harris were to miss time, or even if Ramondre Stevenson started to jump up to a 50-50 split, he could have a really nice season coming up and at worst could end up being a flex play for you on a weekly basis. Now, going from one of my favorite running backs to one of my favorite nicknames, Albert, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Albert? Albert, are you okay? Like I said, one of my favorite nicknames that we've came up, come up with here. Bobby Trees is the first one. Yes, we did come up with Bobby Trees. Don't let anyone tell you differently. And then Albert, are you okay? Even goes over Jack Mother and Doyle for me. So Albert, are you okay? Last season finishes the tight end 29, only 59 fantasy points. Nothing crazy. Right now, currently going as the tight end 15, which actually, here's the thing. I put together this video late last week before I was gone for the weekend. So when I got back, I could record. But the uh, ADP had changed a little bit. He went from being like tight end 17 to tight end 15. So he's already starting to climb. And again, last year didn't have a crazy year. 33 receptions on 40 targets, 330 receiving yards and two touchdowns. Nothing to be crazy about there, right? Nothing to say, okay. Albert, are you okay? You're looking amazing. Nothing about that. But that's why we tell you not to look at just box scores. Because when you take a look at the efficiency and diving deep, he had an 82.5% catch rate, second among tight ends last season. He had 7.4 yards after contact per reception, third among tight ends. His 1.94 yards per per route run were six. And when targeted last season, he had a 117.7 passer rating, which was seventh among tight ends. Albert, are you okay? Was out there beating down the efficiency and making it work. Absolutely love that from Albert. Are you okay? And as we see the volume tick up for him this year, a lot of these things could stay in place because you've got Jerry Judy, you've got Cortland Sutton, and you've got a really, really good run game. So Albert, are you okay? Is going to be a guy that while the volume might not explode through the roof, He doesn't necessarily need the volume, knowing that he could keep up a lot of this efficiency that we saw from him last year. Now, there could be a little bit of a pushback from some people who say, but wait a second, new quarterback Russell Wilson has never really taken a look at a tight... Listen, wait. Timeout, timeout, flag on the play, because that's just recency bias getting you there, because he really hasn't had a good tight end in a while. He hasn't. In fact, the last good tight end he had, absolutely he crushed it. And that was Jimmy Graham back in 2016 and 2017. In 2016, Jimmy Graham was the tight end four with 156 fantasy points. In 2017, he was also the tight end four with 142 fantasy points. And that Jimmy Graham that we got in those two seasons was late stage career Jimmy Graham. Now, He wasn't bad by any means, but he wasn't like prime Jimmy Graham that we saw while he was in New Orleans. Still very, very good seasons, and Russell Wilson was able to help aid him in those two years in 2016 based on just just the team, just the team numbers that we take a look at. Not, Not overall among tight ends. But in 2016, his 95 targets were second on the team, 65 receptions were second, 923 receiving yards were second, and his six touchdowns were second. In 2017, just a little bit of a step back in a couple of areas, 96 targets, still second, 
57 receptions, still second. Now, he wasn't as big play reliant in 2017. The big plays reduced by quite a bit. His 520 receiving yards were only fourth on the team, but he scored 10 touchdowns, which was first on the team. So we've seen Albert, are you okay? Or we've seen Jimmy Graham with Russell Wilson be a top fantasy option. Albert, are you okay? Maybe we're headed in that direction with him. Maybe it's not something that comes to fruition right away, but if he can stay healthy, I really believe that you're going to see Albert, are you okay? Get a decent amount of targets, definitely more than the 33 targets or 36 targets or whatever it was we saw last season. Definitely more than that. If we can get this guy up anywhere between 80 and 100 targets and he keeps up with some of the efficiency and finds the end zone, Albert, are you okay? Could 100% find himself in the top 12 tight ends by the end of the year. Now, a couple of rookies that are starting to make their way into the news a little bit more. And if you've been listening on the channel, you've heard us talk about these guys. But we need we need to basically reestablish with you why we're taking a look at him. And the first one is Damien Pierce. Now, what was it, a month or two ago, a month and a half or so, I did a video that included Marlon Mack. And in that video, I gave some reasons why, so we need to be keeping an eye on Marlon Mack. But it is Damian Pierce now that is leading the way. Marlon Mack is still considered the starter right now, but Damian Pierce is 100% headed for taking this job. Now that I've got a little bit more opportunity to watch some more film on him, now that I've heard a little bit more uh, from training camp, now that I've seen him in some live game action, Damian Pierce is a guy that I do think could end up stealing touches from Marlon Mack as the season goes on and by the end of the season becomes the starter there. He's being drafted 126 overall as the RB45 right now. Definitely looking at him as like an RB4 type. This past week in his preseason game, he had 49 rushing attempt or 49 rushing yards on five attempts, averaging 9.8 yards per attempt. And honestly, I did break down the film a little bit already from this game. I'm going to be posting it as a members-only video. So if you want to watch some game film with me and get a look at Damian Pierce and what we could be seeing from him this year and what his pros and cons are, make sure you become a member by hitting the join button down below. If you join the 10 or the $20 tier, you get access, full access to our Discord channel, which is absolutely incredible. This is no normal Discord server. This is probably one of the more advanced Discord servers you would be in. So hit that join button, become a member today, and you're going to see a Damian Pierce film breakdown coming very, very soon. Keep them in your draft boards. Also, another guy that's picking up steam this weekend, George Pickens. Current ADP puts him at 154 overall as the wide receiver 68 this past weekend. Three receptions for 43 yards and a touchdown. Pickens is looking like the real deal. And again, if you've watched us here or on Headliner U with Chris Chouse, you've heard us talk about George Pickens. This guy was an absolute steal in the draft for the Steelers. In fact, we've talked about him on the podcast quite a bit. My concern is no longer him stealing away looks from Deontay Johnson. It's going to be Chase Claypool because your Deontay Johnson is going to get cornerback one coverage. Chase Claypool could potentially end up going to the slot, which we've seen happen so far this uh, this preseason. And George Pickens on the outside against cornerback two coverage, he could end up seeing some big games. Now, I don't think he's going to be a reliable option that's going to give you weekly, weekly input, but he is a guy that if you play three wide receivers in your league, I think in some leagues you can absolutely stash him in there as a wide receiver three based on the matchup alone and potentially have some good options for you. These are some good numbers. This guy is a beast. I mean, if you saw the video of him just absolutely tossing the cornerback to the ground, that was, that. I mean, he just exploded off the line at him. He's got that quick twitch. He's got everything that you need to do for that. I 100% I, I see this guy at some point, making an impact this season, is he going to be a stud this year? I don't know. And now that they're bringing jo now that they're bringing Deontay Johnson back, we have to hope that Kenny Pickett or Mitchell Trubisky end up being the real deal this year to get him the ball even more. But hey, there are four guys right there. Two guys I wanted to go a little bit deeper on. Two other guys that I wanted to bring up to make sure you're not missing them. Some guys that I think could absolutely be absolutely be fantasy studs for you coming up soon. We've got to keep an eye on them. we got to make sure that we don't just let them slide 
to our league mates because that would be no good because then they could end up beating you with them. But ladies and gentlemen, do me a favor. Hit the like button for me. Leave me a comment down below. Is there somebody on your radar right now that you believe could be the next fantasy football stud? Don't don't tell me a guy that's going like in the first round, okay? Give me a little bit deeper than that. A guy that you're taking a look at and saying, hey, I want this guy. I need him. He's the next guy up. Leave me a comment down below. And if you're new here to the Fantasy Headliners, you got to subscribe. Become a part of Headliner Nation today. I'm going to get out of here, though, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe and healthy. Peace out. And I'll catch you all on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. Analytics off the chain. All the channels, not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headliner Nation, we running the game. Y'all stuck on third down. Your content's playing change. Headliners on top now. We gonna move and change podcasts off the rip. Draft guide, so legit. Fantasy world, our game tight. You know we about that chub life. Stuck in a rut and you need some motivation. Face head to the channel for this headliner nation. I'm a headliner.